What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it is it is Tuesday, December 8th. Uh, I know this is a little unusual, but uh, normally I just do one video a week. Uh, I kind of had the itch to make another video and see how it goes putting out this second video this week. Uh, I'm going to try and get this up by tomorrow. The thing that I really want to talk about today is portfolios. More specifically, I guess I'm going to gear this more towards portfolios for junior developers um, as I am not technically titled as a junior developer. Uh, my professional working title is front-end developer, but I am technically new to the industry. I do have a portfolio. Uh, I was a bootcamp graduate and going the self-taught route before that. Uh, so my portfolio is probably somewhat comparable to other people who come from that situation or that type of background. Uh, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys the portfolio that I used while I was applying to uh, jobs in search of my first developer job. Now, there are a couple things that I want to talk about first, and part of that is why portfolios are so important when searching for developer jobs. The reason behind this is because your ability to get hired as a developer is really based upon your skills. Uh, you need a way to prove that you have these skills and a way to showcase them. And that's what your portfolio is really for, is being able to demonstrate your capabilities to someone uh, and basically convince them why they should hire you. Because if you think about it in terms of, say you wanted to hire somebody to do something for you, like say work on your car, but they have no way of proving that they've ever actually worked on a car before, the odds that you're going to trust them with that job is substantially lower than if they have a way of proving it, like if they work for a reputable company or they're a certified mechanic. It's kind of the same thing with a developer, except your certification in a sense is your portfolio. It's not really a certification, but it's showing that you have the skill sets necessary to do the tasks at hand. Now, if you happen to have seen my other video that uh, I will link up here in the corner about how I was able to find a developer job within 30 days of graduating my coding bootcamp, uh, I think one of the things that really played to my advantage in my job search was the fact that I already had a portfolio. Basically, uh, when I was self-teaching prior to going to a coding bootcamp, I did briefly apply to uh, jobs for a little bit during that time frame. Uh, I was unsuccessful in finding work, I just didn't have the skills necessary at the time, but I had already constructed a portfolio. So essentially what I did after I graduated from Hack Reactor uh, was I took all of my latest projects that I had built during that time and I added them to uh, my existing portfolio and basically replaced my old less less uh, attractive projects I guess you could say. Now something that some people may not know about coding boot camps or at least the one I went to in particular which as I mentioned was Hack Reactor, uh, building a portfolio is not actually part of the curriculum at these coding boot camps. You essentially kind of get projects that would go on your portfolio but building the portfolio yourself is kind of something that you have to take upon yourself to do after graduating. Now, I kind of had an advantage in the sense that, like I said, I already had a portfolio. I just had to replace my projects that were on it. This was a big leg up to me to get a head start in the job search because I already had this and a lot of other people graduating from coding boot camps did not have portfolios. Uh, they didn't really have this, uh, this like one link that they could put on everything that they send out, um, whether that be emails, job applications, resumes, they didn't have this single uh, endpoint, this portfolio link that they could attach and somebody could click on it and go and see all of their latest work uh, in one central location. Maybe they would have links to all their projects or to their GitHub, but uh, you know, most of these hiring managers are not code savvy. They're not gonna go look at the code in your GitHub and know what you're doing. Um, they want a place that they can see your actual projects. Um, and you know, some hiring managers want the same thing. They don't really want to go dig through somebody's code and look at everything. Uh, they would rather just see uh, your projects and see that you know how to build something. Now, some will go through your GitHub, but I'm sure at the end of the day, they would much rather just be able to look at a hosted project and see the end result. And then if they have something more detailed that they want to see about that project, then they can go and dig through your code. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the portfolio. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this portfolio. Uh, so this that you're seeing on screen is the exact portfolio that uh, I used when I was uh, searching for my first developer job. As you can see, it, it's not super uh, complicated. Um, and if I'm being honest, 
a lot of this I actually did not build myself. There's something that's very popular, especially as a junior developer, um, if you're or if you're just not great at design. Um, one of the things that I would recommend is uh, exactly what I did, which um, this this uh, portfolio is actually built using a template. Um, it's built on React and Gatsby, uh, or Gatsby JS, which is kind of like based on React. So I used a Gatsby template. Uh, these are pretty easy to find, uh, not too difficult to set up, but basically you find a template that you like, and then you um, initialize a project from that template, and then you can modify it as needed to suit your needs. One other thing you'll notice is up here in the top, the domain is uh, my name. So I uh, purchased my own domain to host this website on. It's actually hosted on Netlify. Uh, and then I attach the domain that I bought um, to it. Uh, I think that it just kind of adds a, a nice little professional look to it, uh, shows that I take it seriously. Uh, I don't think it's really necessary, but it's a nice touch. And uh, you can get a domain for pretty cheap. Uh, this one, I think I paid probably like 10 bucks for a year. Um, it does depend on what the domain is. Some are more expensive than others. Uh, some are substantially more expensive than others, but fortunately this one was not very expensive. So I have this nice header section over here uh, with a photo of myself. Some people are 50-50 uh, on the photo thing. Some people don't think that you should have photos of yourself uh, on your resume or your portfolio because um, there are people who are judgmental, um, but you know, I just thought it was a nice touch, a nice personal touch. Uh, so I have this photo of me up here, nice little introduction and what I am. Uh, I do label myself as a full stack developer, but in the workplace, I am a front end developer. Um, below that, I listed links to some of my social accounts, like my LinkedIn, my Twitter, uh, which was geared towards developing, uh, or which is pretty much only geared towards uh, development. Um, I also have a development based Instagram. I'm sure a lot of you probably follow that. Uh, and then my GitHub link right here. So all my all my links to uh, things that somebody may find of interest uh, are right here in this header section. Uh, over here on the right, I have an overview section. Um, basically says who I am, what some of my qualifications are, uh, such as my bachelor's degree, uh, which just a side note, this is not where I learned how to code. Um, you absolutely do not need a bachelor's degree to do this. Uh, I just, I just happen to have a bachelor's degree. So that's, that's my disclaimer, but yeah. And then I stated that I was seeking full-time, uh, software engineering opportunities, uh, in the area. So I added a nice little personal touch here at the bottom. Uh, I had something very similar on my LinkedIn profile, just something to kind of like show that I'm a real person, uh, that may, you know, maybe somebody could connect with in some kind of way. I didn't want to seem like a robot basically. And that, that all kind of comes down to like an opinion. Uh, you can be as personal or impersonal as you want on these things, but just remember to keep it somewhat professional. It is uh, essentially your developer resume in a sense, but yeah, just be aware of that. And then as you can see below that, I have my skills section. So uh, skills section, this was uh, at the recommendation of um, my career services manager across everything uh, as far as my resume, my LinkedIn, uh, portfolios if you have them uh, basically any technology you've ever laid eyes on or used in the slightest bit uh, list it you may not be the most fluent in that technology but maybe you understand the basics of it if you've used it uh, the biggest thing here is that um, this is more so for your resume than portfolio um, I just like uniformity across them but for resumes and LinkedIn's uh, these are essentially buzzwords or keywords. Um, they will help your resume uh, get through filters if there's certain keyword scoring systems uh, that a company's uh, resume tracking system or applicant tra tracking system is using. Um, having a bunch of buzzwords like this can actually help you get through some of those filters. Uh, same thing goes on LinkedIn if you have a bunch of um, you know keywords uh, that that match uh, what recruiters are searching for, you'll you'll probably score higher in a listing uh, in the search results. So just keep that in mind. Um, obviously, I'm not a professional or an expert in every single one of these technologies. I don't think that there are very many people who are masters in all of these. Uh, that's kind of absurd. 
to, to a point. I mean, obviously, like there's people who are probably fairly experienced in all of these, but or at least most of them. But just keep in mind, a lot of even like a lot of applications, like they're wish lists. Uh, they're not by any means like a, a solid requirement. But yeah, that that's the real reason behind putting 50 different skills on your resume or your LinkedIn profile is uh, keyword scoring. And then as we scroll down the page here, these, uh, it's labeled recent work, but these are my actual projects that were used on my portfolio. Uh, three of these are actually projects that I did in Hack Reactor. Uh, they were built from scratch, uh, except for this one that had a legacy code base. Um, and then one, my COVID tracker here, was something that uh, I built on my own prior to going to Hack Reactor. But if, if there's something that uh, uh, you're, you know, you're not sure about types of projects and stuff for portfolios, uh, some of these are kind of advanced uh, idea, ideas for projects, rather difficult to, to work your way through. But if you can, it's a pretty solid demonstration of your skills. I will go through and show you these one by one. Uh, so for example here, this one, uh, Elysium uh, Solutions. So this was uh, an application that me and a team uh, of three others built. Basically, um, we built out a uh, web page, uh, e-commerce web page using a, using a microservice architecture, basically. Uh, so each of us built out a different microservice and uh, we built these in React, uh, hosted them on AWS and then rendered all of them on the same page using a proxy server. Uh, so this is just the link for mine. Uh, I don't think everybody has theirs hosted anymore, but basically I have this button here and this will pull up the uh, microservice that I built. I built out this rating and, uh, ratings and reviews microservice. So you can see like this stuff works. Uh, this wasn't entirely finished. Like some of this stuff, uh, like this add a review form, I never actually finished but you know you can vote for helpful reviews and it will update uh back to the the api that was used for this um all this data does come from a back-end api which is pretty cool so um this is this is a pretty pretty advanced project for a junior developer portfolio uh next project here this one is no longer hosted um because this required uh it, it would have eventually charged me money so i, I took it down uh, basically, this right here was building out a backend API to replace um, the uh, existing API that was for somebody else's code that they wrote for, for this project. Uh, so basically, you get somebody else's code base uh, for a front end and you have to build out a new backend. And then you have to scale it to handle uh, at least a thousand requests per second. Um, you're, you're basically uh, going to use like a, like a load testing software. Um, I ended up using one called Artillery and I used this to uh, load test that application and I was basically trying to break a thousand requests per second which is pretty, pretty hard to do um, unless you're like really good at this kind of stuff. But yeah, so as you can see like there's a section here that says mean uh, response per second. Uh, I reached up to a thousand and fourteen I believe. Uh, yeah, but basically like that that number will climb until your server can't handle the load anymore And then it will crash and the number starts plummeting very very difficult project uh, That one that one's a lot harder than uh, this first one here uh, So next was uh, an MVP project uh, minimum viable product that uh, I was working on at hack reactor This was the final project before I graduated um, this was a fun project and uh, uh, Basically like I, I was building just like a a simple platform for developers uh, to like share their pro uh, share their projects, and then others could vote for projects that they liked. Uh, it was pretty simple. Um, uh, I just called it Cedar. It was a working title. This one is on Heroku, so it takes a second to spin up the instance. Uh, but yeah, so this was built in React, and then this one has a MongoDB Atlas database connected to it, um, which is where it's storing all of this data. Uh, some of the people from my cohort actually did put their uh, applications on here, like Puppy Rescue was one. Uh, I think there was another one on here somewhere. Yeah, Dirtbag Companion. Yeah, so a couple, you know, people that I was actually in class with had put their applications on here. Um, I just thought it was kind of a cool little project, a way for people to share their stuff. Uh, and this was kind of an example of like what happens when you you want to see um, 
the applications that people have put on here. I think some of them like don't have photos like this one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just simple examples. And then, you know, these are uh, sorted in order from like the most popular ones like Google down to the least popular. And then if say somebody upvotes one, the order will uh, change to reflect that so that they stay in the order of the most popular uh, applications. And then I have a form here that you can, you know, upload new um, applications if you want to submit your own application. Uh, and then, you know, anybody can see this. So never really got around to finishing it, but it was a fun project. Uh, it was cool to be able to share that with other people that I was working with at the time. And then this uh, last one here is my COVID tracker. This was one that I built prior to going to Hack Reactor. Uh, this one was always kind of a work in progress too. Uh, I wouldn't really say I ever like finished it, um, but it was a lot of fun to work on. This one is also hosted on Netlify. You can see the link up here. Uh, so this one pulls um, COVID-19 data from, uh, oh, probably shouldn't say that, uh, censor myself. I don't wanna get in trouble with YouTube for false information, but anyways. So this, uh, this data comes from an API that basically updates, uh, it, it pulls all the data from different countries, um, centralizes it, and then updates that uh, data anywhere from uh, like, as often as their data gets updated. So like probably every like hour it gets updated. It might even be better than that now. And then you can search this by country too. So I can look at different countries and see, uh, see what their latest statistics are for confirmed, recovered, uh, critical and fatality rates. Um, I have this little about section here. Uh, fairly like simple project, but I thought that it was really important at the time that, you know, I know like every, every developer on the planet was building one of these, but I just thought that it was a cool project. So um, the last little like nice touch with this section is a uh, this isn't like a requirement by any means, but it's a nice touch um, to save some people some time. Uh, like I have these these uh, GIF images here. So basically I recorded uh, short videos of my projects and then um, I used uh, like a web-based converter to convert the uh, video files into GIFs. And then I set those as the display thumbnails for these cards. So uh basically like it shows like a short demonstration and you can see this one's kind of outdated um because it doesn't look like this anymore but yeah it gives like a nice little demonstration of the application like before they actually go and visit it so if for whatever reason they can't load the application there's still like this nice little demonstration here that shows what it's supposed to do um and then here at the bottom uh, is a get in touch form. This was actually, uh, I didn't build this. This came from Formspring because uh, I didn't want to go through the trouble of building out a form that sent emails and everything. Uh, and at the time, I don't even think I really knew how to do that when I when I initially built this portfolio. Uh, but Formspring had a nice little like drop in form that I could use. And then they basically forward the emails to my account. And it was a nice way to keep my personal email address from being exposed. So. Um, anytime that I want to ensure that I no longer get emails, I can just either go to form spring and cancel it, or I can, uh, just take this form out or take the site down, honestly, cause I don't even really need the site right now. Cause, um, uh, I'm not actively job seeking. So, but that pretty much wraps up, uh, my portfolio. So, um, as you can see, it's not anything super crazy. Uh, you don't have to build the next Facebook to, uh, have a cool portfolio, just get a template um, and build a project from it and then modify it as you need it and drop in your personal projects. And that's that's really all you have to do. It doesn't have to be super crazy. That's really all I have for you guys today though. I really hope that you found this video helpful uh, and that this kind of inspired you to get out there and build a portfolio for yourself if you don't already have one or if you do have one, maybe you wanna go out there and make some changes and update it. Uh, maybe it's a little out of date. Maybe you got some better projects, um, but uh, if you guys have a portfolio that you want me to check out, that would be awesome. I would love to check out your guys' portfolios. If you have them, just drop the link in the comments below and I will check those out and uh, uh, I will you know, let you know what I think of them. Uh, but anyways, that's all I got guys. Uh, I will catch you guys next time.